Welcome to Advanced Embedded System Project Number 2. In this project, we will accomplish seven objectives in the setup function. Reduce CPU frequency from 240 MHz to 80 MHz. Enable Watchdog Timer, and reset the watchdog every 5 seconds. Turn off Wi-Fi when it is not needed to save energy. Modify the task in Project 1, such that, ESP32S2 goes to deep sleep. Add an interrupt routine to the input switch, to turn on the built-in LED, and set up a timer interrupt for 1 second to off the LED. Measure the built-in temperature sensor on ESP32S2 every 6 seconds. Put the measured data into a queue. Create a task to display all the data from the queue on serial.println every 20 seconds. Set the deep sleep time to 10.01 am. Now time is 9.59 am. Compiling and uploading the code. Frequency reduced to 240 MHz to 80 MHz. Connected to Wi-Fi. Enabling Watchdog Timer. Local time updating from NTP server. Wi-Fi disabled after updating time. Resetting the watchdog timer every 5 seconds. Printing temperature sensor data after 20 seconds, which is collected every 6 seconds. CPU going to deep sleep at 10.01 am as instructed. CPU waking up at 10.02 am, after 1 minute. Connecting to Wi-Fi back to update time from the NTP server. An interrupted task is called by pressing the switch. Built-in LED lit up, and automatically turns off, after the timer runs out. Okay. So let me take you through the code. This code is built on top of project 1, so I will not go through that part again. The link to the first project video is given in the description below. First, we will reduce the CPU frequency to 80 MHz. In the void setup, we have written a code line to get the current CPU frequency, which we obtain as 240 MHz by default. So, we have set the CPU frequency to 80 MHz. Then we need to enable the watchdog timer, and we must reset the watchdog timer, so that the CPU won't time out, if a task or thread is running. The timeout value for the watchdog timer, is defined as 20 seconds in this project. We can set it to any value higher than 5 seconds, because we will write a code to reset the watchdog timer every 5 seconds. This is the library that is used. Okay. Then we need to turn off Wi-Fi, when it is not needed. We only need Wi-Fi to update the NTP. So within that period, we can turn off the Wi-Fi connection. So we define two void loops to enable and disable a Wi-Fi. From our experience, we found out that, we need to disable the watchdog timer, before disabling the Wi-Fi. Otherwise, the watchdog timer will time out, when the Wi-Fi gets disabled. If we write the code as Wi-Fi dot disconnect true, to disconnect Wi-Fi, then, it will erase the SSID and password. So to avoid that from happening, we write it as, Wi-Fi.disconnect false comma true. Then just before we need to update the NTP, we will call enable Wi-Fi function. If the Wi-Fi was not enabled, the NTP will not get updated. Then we need to put the CPU into a deep sleep, after 6 p.m. and wake up at 6 a.m. So, we create a task for that. And then we define the void loop. Here we can set at what time we want the CPU to go to sleep. Then we enable the wake up timer, to set how long we want the CPU to sleep. By default, the time is in microseconds. So from this variable, we convert microseconds into seconds. To test the code, we will make the board deep sleep, and wake up every minute. Then we will flush the serial, 
and put the ESP32 board to deep sleep. Here we have set the sleep time to 60 seconds. So the CPU will wake up after 1 minute. After that, we have to add an interrupt routine to the input switch, to turn on the built-in LED. We can see inside the void setup, that we define the built-in LED as output and read its state. Then we use the button on the ESP32-S2 board as the input switch, and the interrupt is attached to detect a rising signal, coming from the switch. We add it into a task, and we assign it a task handler, because this task is an interrupt. Here you can see that the task handle 1 is the name that we gave for the handler. Then we define a void function, if the button is pressed, it will turn the LED on and begin the timer. So we attach the timer to the interrupt, and enable it for 1 second. After the timer alarm becomes false, the LED will automatically turn off. Let's see that in action. You can see that the serial prints, that the button was pressed. The LED got lit for 1 second, and it got off after 1 second. So, we can see that the interrupt puts zero hold the normal execution of the other tasks, and runs it first. Last but not least, we have to make a task, to measure the built-in temperature sensor values, in every 6 seconds and put those values into a queue. Then make another task, to display all the data in the queue on the serial monitor. Let's see how we do that. First of all, we need the Arduino underscore HTS221.h library. You can install it from the Arduino manage libraries. Then we define the pin for the built-in temperature humidity sensor. Then we will need to define a Q handler. We named it as Q. The Q size is 6, because there are no more than 4 or 5 readings. Within the time, we are assigning to read values and print. Then inside the void setup, we create the Q. Here we are using float as the data type, because we get decimal values for the temperature. So then we will begin to read the humidity temperature sensor. To wire the inbuilt sensor to the pin, we use wire.begin. Then we create the two tasks, and assign lower priority than the interrupt is required. Then if we go to the void function, we read the temperature with a 6 second delay, and send it to the queue. Then in the next void function of display temperature, we will receive the values in the queue, and store in as variables, to print after 20 seconds. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching.